Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Spring Boot. Now before going for Spring Boot, let's try to understand what is Spring Framework and why it is so famous. Now to understand this, let's go to year 2000. So in that time if you want to create a project in Java for the enterprise, you will be using a lot of Java EE features and one of them is EJB. Now EJB was quite famous and it was one of the best technology available at that point and you can achieve a lot of features right like messaging then uh, look up for the entities. The only problem is you know it becomes difficult to manage them and then of course you are working with entities so they are heavy. And that's where these people they came up with a concept of POJOs where you can achieve the same features with the help of POJO and they have included that in Spring Framework. Now Spring Framework provides you this feature of working with POJOs, it provides you a feature of dependency injection and we can work with AOP. So there are so many features provided by Spring Framework so it becomes a framework where you can achieve any business purpose. And the best part of Spring Framework, it, it can integrate with other frameworks as well like Hibernate and Sturts. And now we know why Spring is the best framework. Now there is one problem. Now when you talk about Spring Framework, of course you will be building big applications, right? And when you say big applications, you will be needing some external jar files. So that's one thing, you have to work with jar files. The second thing is the configuration. And trust me, when you're working on the enterprise application, you need to add a lot of configuration or you have to configure a lot of stuff. And that's where the problem starts, you know, because if you're working on a project, you want to focus more on the convention, your coding part basically, not on the configuration because we are developers, we don't want to spend much time in the configuration. I'm not saying we can directly skip all the configuration, but we focus, we try to focus more on the coding part. Now the thing is, Spring is good, but we want to focus more on coding and that's where these people who created Spring Framework, they thought, okay, why, why, why don't we create something where as a developer, they will focus more on the convention and that's where Spring Boot comes into picture. Now again, Spring Boot is not a replacement for Spring Framework because as a developer, you are still using Spring Framework, okay? So there's a developer, there's a framework, you're still using the same framework. But in between, just to help you, we have Spring Boot. Because Spring Boot says, hey developer, I know you want to work on a project and Spring is the best framework. The only thing is there's some, there are some jar files which you have to add and there's a configuration you have to do. And don't worry, I'm there for you. So Spring Boot says, I will give you dependency and I will give you the configuration. Awesome, right? Now the main idea of Spring Boot is to give you a production ready application. So the moment you create a Spring Boot project, you don't have to do any configuration. It is runnable and you can deploy it on the, on the production server. It will do nothing, but it will work. You don't have to do any configuration. And the more features you want, you can add some features. And for those features, you can do some small configuration. But all the basic configuration will be done by Spring Boot. Okay, now there's one more thing, you know. Let's let's say we are, we are not working on Spring Boot. We are working with normal Spring project. And we want to make a web application. And if you want to deploy the application, what you will do is, of course, you need a server. Maybe a virtual server or a cloud server. And if you have a server, you need to install a Linux server. Okay, so that's done. So we have a physical server, then we have a Linux OS. And on that OS, of course, you'll be installing a web server, maybe a app server, maybe Tomcat or Glassfish. And then on that Tomcat, you'll be deploying the val file which you create for web application. So, so many layers, right? And nowadays, we are moving towards microservices and we want to make it a bit easier for us, right? And that's why Spring Boot says, Hey, you don't have to actually do all those things by yourself. In Spring Boot, it provides you a embedded server, which means the application jar file which will be created. Okay, we will not be making var files now. We'll be making a jar file and inside the jar file we'll be having Tomcat. Oh, we'll be having Tomcat inside a jar file. Uh, that's why right. that's an embedded Tomcat or embedded server you can say. So Spring Boot says your jar file will have a embedded Tomcat, which means you can run your project and on any JVM. You don't basically need, need a web server there. Now Spring Boot provides you so many features. Two of my favorite is the first one is startup projects because if you want a project, let's say if you want to make a web application, Spring will say, uh, Spring Boot will say, okay, we got Spring Boot Starter Web. It will give you a web project. And if you want, maybe if you want to work with JDBC, Spring Boot says, okay, don't worry, we have Spring Starter, Spring Boot Starter, JDBC, you can simply use that and it will give you a ready project. What about the configuration? 
Spring Boot also has Spring Boot Auto Configuration which will do the configuration for you so that you can focus on the convention not on, not on configuration. So let's say if you want to do some configuration, maybe you want to modify configuration, maybe you want to do some manual configuration. Is it possible? Does, does Spring Boot provide you the XML files? And the answer is no. Spring Boot will not generate any XML file for you, okay, because there is no XML file. Then how would you modify if you want to do some configuration? And that's where we have a special file which is application.properties. You can add the properties which you want there and it's quite simple. Now, you might, you might want to see the practical implementation of this, right? Of course, you will be. So in the description area, you will find two links and those two links will help you to understand Spring Boot more. They are not the uh, exact com Spring, complete Spring Boot video, but it will give you a good glimpse how a Spring Boot works and how can you create a project. I hope you got the basic idea of Spring Boot. Let me know in the comment section and do like the video if you liked it. And thanks for watching, everyone.